Tim, obviously uh, an exciting year coming up. It's going to be a little more normal than last yeah. year was. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, and you guys had a good season last year. Started yep. off 4-0, a little disappointing at the end, yep. but a lot of returning talent, including LB, a quarterback. Yep. What are you most excited for when it comes to this year? Uh, uh, multiple things. I mean, obviously the, the chance to get back some normalcy and having some fans back. I know these guys have been working really hard to, to play in front of fans again, so I know they're excited. And, and our guys have done a great job this whole offseason because uh, they didn't go away in January. They... Uh, they showed great discipline to get the off season done that like we needed. We we missed an off season in the COVID year, which really hurt their body. So we're in we're in the best shape we've been in a long time, and uh, and I'm excited for these guys to get out there and, and kind of show what they've been doing. You know, it's Caleb's done a great job. Our own line is solid. Um, you know, I think our defense is much improved. So I'm I'm excited to watch those guys actually have a chance to go show everybody what they've been working hard on. You guys lost a, a big playmaker in Eskridge, um, but there's a lot of other guys in this roster that you can turn to. Who are you, or who should we be looking out for this year, maybe as a playmaker? Yeah, I mean, Sky's always been one of our playmakers. Uh, we actually, I mean, we have two to three running backs that have always been heavily featured, and, and I think that's that's kind of what makes our offense go. We run the ball, and everyone knows it, and I think that's what allows uh, allowed D. Eskridge to have some of the looks he had and some of the coverages he had, and same way with uh, Jalen Hall and, and Corey Crooms is a, is a young guy who didn't play much last year. He's had an unbelievable camp, so I feel like we have three or four wideouts that – we kind of have a four-man rotation at wideout right now, um, and it's the smartest group we've ever had. They can all play every position, so it really gives the gives the play caller a lot of options because we can we can literally move them anywhere, and they know what they're doing. So it's uh, it's exciting, and uh, you know we're, we're running what we run. We've done a little bit more with Caleb. He's gotten more and more comfortable. We've been giving more and more responsibility, so we can do a little bit more fun things, you know, uh, which everyone will see when we get out there. You guys had some thrilling finishes last <laughs> yeah. year. Uh, I was here for the, that crazy, yeah, was it Toledo? Toledo, uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely crazy ending there, but no one was here. You know, maybe, maybe a few family and friends for a few yeah. games. It's going to be different this year. What are you most excited for having an atmosphere, and maybe are they most excited for it? Yeah, I think the, you know, that home game atmosphere really matters. You know, it really helps our guys. It, it energizes our guys on uh, on every down, and that's what people don't realize. Yes, it's great when we score, but on third downs, when it's quiet, when we're out there, and when our defense is out there, it's loud and it's hard for the offense to communicate. That, that's a that's a home field advantage, you know. And I tell people that all the time. That that game, I, I wish Waldo Stadium was packed for that game because that was probably one of the better games I've ever been a part of. And I wish the fans could have experienced it with us. Um, but you know, we're, I mean, we might have more, and, and it'll be good that they're here now. Max going to be tough as always. Um, is there any team that has caught your eye or you're looking at? I know obviously Ball State had a great end of their year yep. last year, but anyone that you're that you're concerned about that you really are focusing on this year, obviously a rival. Inside. The next one, really, I got to be honest with you, it's uh, we are in a situation where in in the MAC West in the last two years, uh, eight of our ten games have come down to the last drive. You know, so it's uh, we know it. I've talked to our players about it. We've done more end of game situation uh, work this year than we've ever done, and we'll continue to do. And um, you know, but but eight of ten, we've we've had to come down to the last drive. We needed to stop, and we've won about half of those games. We're about 50-50 in them, and and we got to get that that cranked up. Hopefully, we play well enough in the first three quarters that it's not many of those games. But uh, realistically, the higher you go in football, I think in the NFL, it's something like 89% of games are decided in the last drive. So, uh, as you as you get to the higher levels, the the games are going to be close, and uh, and we have to continue to close them out, and that's really what we've been focused on. I think that Ellaby getting another year under him last year helps with that at all. You know, he's, he's not, he's still not old. I mean, what, he's a redshirt sophomore, I believe, yeah. but he has two years of, of playing experience already. Does that help going forward in, in those close games? Huge. And, and he has a knack for it anyway. He's always been a guy that, that loves that moment and loves that situation. And now that he's been in it more, he's calmer, he, he understands the clock, he, he sees so much more at the line of scrimmage. I mean, when, when we get, when he gets done with a play or a drive, he comes off and we have, it's amazing how much he's he's taking in. He's like, well, coach, I saw the corner, I saw the play clock down to this. I knew he was going to do this, and and he's able to take all that in. Whereas a young guy, he can get a, get one and two, kind of baby step him along, and and he's really ready. We we put him in every last game minute situation in the last week that you can be in, and he's really uh, made I think one mistake, uh, just throwing a ball he shouldn't have thrown, and other than that, he's been he's been lights out, and that's another learning experience. I'd rather have him learning in camp than than uh, on a Saturday. So. Uh, so yeah, he's he's really the key. Makes us go. Uh, he's a leader on the team, and um, 
it's been fun to watch him lead the team. Last year there were no non-conference games. <laughs> no. This year you're going to the big house. Obviously an interesting environment that's going to be there for your team, and they haven't seen something like that in a while. What is that first game going to help for you? You know, What is, what is it going to do for you guys going forward that you hope can help throughout the rest of the season? Well, I think it's already helped us. I mean, we know we're playing a good team in the first first game, and, and that helps training camp. You know, my senior year, we opened up Florida, and it just gives you a little little edge to camp, you know, however you put it, as opposed to being a team that no one's heard of. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a huge, huge game, a lot of great players they have. We're, we're literally, today was the last day of camp, so we are we are turning the page to Michigan now, so we will we will start in, installing and talking about them tonight and tomorrow, and and every practice from here on out, we'll be getting prepared for them. So, uh, you know, we're going to learn a lot about how we handle a situation. It's not, you know, hopefully we can go out there and execute and do what we need to do and not let any of the outside factors affect us. We've been talking about it, but no better place to get that tested than uh, a potential 110,000 people. So uh, we'll, we're going to know a lot about uh, how well we did in the offseason, how well we prepared them for uh, kind of ignoring the distraction and noise and just playing our game, and, and we're going to have a great chance to do that in week one. Now, obviously, on paper, nobody's going to give you a chance, but <laughs> people have gone to the big house and won those games before. Yeah. Do you ever do you show them any of those games, or is there do they need to see that to have any belief, or is there already a belief there? I think there's a belief there. I think every player that plays at this level has the confidence that they can play with anybody, and and hopefully they focus on on what they're doing and how to execute their job as opposed to thinking about who they're doing it against, you know? And, and when you get a team that does that and is worried about themselves so much and kind of crazy center focused on getting better, you, you got a chance in every game, no matter who you're playing. So obviously things that happen early on in the game will affect us. I mean, uh, you can get getting up and down early can, can really make it, make it hard on, on teams in their first game. But, uh, you know, I just, they know. I mean, being from Michigan, most of the kids are from Michigan or the Midwest. They know who we're playing. I mean, I might show them if we were, when we went to USC, you know, I want to make sure they all know who USC was. Um, same way when we played Florida, but, but we're playing a team that everybody knows, everyone respects. Uh, so we, we know what's coming and we're, we're excited for the challenge and, and to test ourselves. Personally for you, you've been here now a full recruiting cycle. Mm -hmm. Last year you came out of the gate, won your first four games in a good, tough Mac West. You feel that momentum starting to build in the program for yourself. You know, are you excited for where this this could go? Yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, our we have pretty much all the guys that I've recruited here on the team now, and and um, and we've addressed some of the issues we've had. I mean, we had some injuries last year that really hurt us in on defense. You know, when we've addressed them, we brought people in. Our depth on defense is unlike it's ever been before. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about what the, the total package of a team we're putting together. And, and when, you've, when you've had some success and you've seen some things, our offense has been fairly explosive. And, and so we, that's hard to find. And we found it, and we have to keep that. And, and our defense has been really good. They haven't been great yet, and I think that that's the next step. And our special teams need to be better. And uh, so once you've had success, it's easy to build. When you don't have success to build off of, it's hard, you know. And so the success we've had, it's not enough success. We're, we're here for one reason, and that's to win the whole thing. And, and that's, what we, that's what we have to do. But the success in the past helps us, makes it easier for us to build for the future because there is a lot of confidence on this team. They've seen it. And uh, we're going to continue to get stronger and, and con continue to have those results. One last question for me. On the defensive side of the ball, who are the playmakers? Who, who, am I, who should I be looking out for on the defensive side of the ball? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously our D-line. I mean, you got Ali, Fayad is, is going to be all over the place. Ralph Holly is going to be all over the place. Uh, we have, I'd say, five or six to seven defensive linemen that are going to rotate through there. Uh, they've all just played so much football. A.J. Thomas is one of the better players, I think, in college football. I mean, he is, I call him the Swiss Army Knife. He can play linebacker. He can play boundary safety. He can play field safety. He can play corner if we need him to. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where we end up putting him. I mean, really, we have that, that Swiss Army Knife that, we can put him wherever if, if the number two at this place is doing better. It's all about who's the best because we know he's playing. It's just where. And uh, having a guy like that, you know, and then we have Bryson back into the boundary. We moved uh, uh, Deshaun Bustle from wide receiver to corner, and he's done an unbelievable job. Uh, Theron Coleman, unfortunately, blew his knee out last training camp. He's back. Zaire Barnes blew his knee out last training camp. He's back. Um, Corbin Moment, everybody knows. And, and Ryan Selig, I mean, probably the, he's probably been the brightest – spot since spring ball our will linebacker he knows uh, he's going to make a ton of plays so excited about where they're at i mean our, our offense has noticed the difference they've i mean it's been struggle when we go one-on-ones because they're doing a great job of covering up guys and 
and playing physical and so and, and we're healthier than we've ever been at this point in the training camp so uh so i'm excited for that group uh it'll be interesting to see who who stands out you know if they run to the ball a lot of it'll be you know if you're at the right place at the right time you maybe get your hands on a couple balls and but i know they're going to get to the quarterback we've done that for a couple years and we'll, we'll continue to do that all right, I'd have one more. Okay. It's a pretty crowded running back group. Yeah. A um, lot of lot of athletes there. Is there a workhorse back that you're going to rely on, or is it more of a running back by committee that you think you might take into the into the season? Well, Ladarius Jefferson and Sean Tyler have been a well, one-two punch, and we had them going early in the season until Sean Tyler got hurt. And and Ladarius has the the heart and the ability to be the workhorse, and he did. Uh, Jackson Kincaid is is a great player too. He's actually number one in yards per carry until he got hurt last year. He's got a little injury. He'll be back by game one. Uh, but Ladarius and Sean, as, as much as we and they're different backs, but they're similar because they, they both know what they're doing. They both do everything. They both can catch. They both can pass pro. Uh, but they bring a, a different running style. So uh, they're a, they're a perfect one-two punch. And and as much as we run the ball and we want to get them through the season. Uh, it's those are the main two guys, and then Jackson will definitely play. And then we got a young kid, Zahir, that that's going to be really good. You know, he's he might just have too much in front of him right now, uh, but he can definitely play. And, and uh, so I'm I'm excited about that room. I've always been excited about that room. We had the one year that we don't really we had um, uh, Bells, and that was like we, we only had Bells, and Bells got a ton of carries, and and he did get banged up by the end of the year, and. And I wish we had two that year because I think if we brought a healthy Bells to the end of the year, we might have made the MAC championship game. But he was, he toughed it out for us. Uh, but I'm happy to have two, really three, uh, to get through a season. Um, you mentioned uh, Ryan Seelig as someone who's probably going to, you know, make a name for himself this uh, fall on defense. Uh, who's the guy on offense, or maybe a, a guy or two on offense that you think are really going to jump out? Probably Crooms, Corey Crooms. He's a guy that he's played a little bit this whole time, but. Um, I mean, I don't know what him and G2 have done this offseason. He, he's fast. I mean, I always knew he, he wasn't ever slow, but he was never, like, legit fast. We've clocked him at 22.4, which is it's not quite D. I mean, D hit 22.7 one time, 23 once. But, I mean, that's that's flying. So, uh, he's always been a good route runner, knew what to do, would always catch the ball. He's always been the next guy in, and now he's, he's definitely in the rotation. He's made a bunch of big plays during training camp, which has been fun to see. Um, I mean, O-line wise, I mean, they're pretty much all back. We're going to have one new guy in there, there two guys still battling for that. But he's he'll be the main new new name because everyone else, you know all their names. You know, and, and Bryce, Bryce Dunley, the transfer from UT Chat, he's done a great job. He's still, he's, he knows what we're doing. His timing with Caleb's getting better every time they're out here. And then, of course, you got Sky and Jalen. So it's uh, a lot of familiar faces, but it'll be nice to be able to add a couple in there to add, to add more variety to what we can do on offense. Uh, any freshmen uh, show they're ready to play more than four games and more than just special teams? You know, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Caden, our, 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 our tight, we have, we have some injuries at tight end. Hopefully Borski's back soon. So Caden has been playing a lot and doing a good job. I mean, I don't know if he'll play more than four. He, he's going to be a really good player. He just doesn't have the body yet. He has the heart. I mean, he's, a, he's one of these, not one of these. He's one of these. And uh, and he'll, he sticks it in there at 200 and I don't even know what he is right now, 230, you know, in there trying to block. Andre Carter, he's doing his best, you know. But when he when he gets in the weight room with G2, he'll be he's gonna be a really good player. Uh, Zahir, the running back, I could see him playing for sure uh, this year. And who else? Uh, Henry, Henry. I mean, the one young wide receiver that's kind of stood out a little bit. Henry. I mean, I give him a bunch of crud because he wears number 13. So I told him if you wear that number, I'm gonna be all over you. And he's he made a couple one-handed catches the other day. You know, pinned one to the back of his, his neck. Uh, he's got some ability. He's still got some learning to do, and he's got a crowded room in front of him. But offensively, I think, I think those guys here and Henry and uh, Caden are kind of the three that that I could see playing more than than four games. You know, um, any guys uh, who are questionable or um, out um, for an extended period of time with any injuries? No, no one's out. I mean, we got we have a couple little little injuries. I mean, Borski's had been, been dealing with the knee, and he he's been running around out here. Um, Caliendo had that thing. He wants to practice. I'm not letting him. Uh, he's pr he's played plenty. You know he'll be ready. Um, uh, who else? Um, well, we had we had one in summer. You know one of the, Corey Walker, one of our freshmen, broke a, a fifth metatarsal in his foot, so he won't be probably available till middle. He hasn't practiced one day yet. But uh, we haven't really we've done our, our trainer our trainers 
and our strength coaches have done an unbelievable job uh, this training camp, better than any. I mean, we had one training camp where we had six ACLs, and then one with four, and last year with two. And uh, knock on wood, we have zero right now. And and so we've done a good job of taking care of one another. And uh, so we'll, like I said, we're we're healthier than we've ever been. Yeah, obviously ACL is a tough injury to come back from, but. Um, uh, Zaire sounds like he um, is up to speed right now. Yep. Um, what have you seen from him that makes you confident he'll be ready to uh, pick up where he left off? We played a couple team reps. We, we had one the other day where he was coming. He was in the B-gap um, court. We were playing live. It was last Friday, I believe. Uh, quarterback pumped out the bubble, you know, and and he came through the B-gap turn, and he hawked this bubble down. I mean, it was, a, it was the first time he's opened up. I mean, truly opened up, had to change direction. He was totally, It was total reaction. Uh, he's so smart that... Uh, when you're coming back from a knee injury and you're really smart, you can kind of anticipate what's going on. But it was he did not expect the bubble to go out there. So he got all the way into the backfield, had to go through the B-gap, take a left-hand turn, and, and haul and make a tackle, and he did. So so I'm excited. I don't know I don't know if he'll start. I don't know if AJ will start there or if we'll start AJ somewhere else. But um, it's a great it's a great problem to have, you know, um, to see where Z- – because Zaire is one of our best players, and so is AJ. Um, and then – so it'll be – it's going to be – we have a couple of battles going on on defense. They're all going to play in different personnel, but uh, but as as Zaire has gotten more comfortable, I always feel like knees they come back in about nine months, but they're really back in about twelve. You know, so I think he's just kind of hitting that point where he feels comfortable again. He's not thinking about it, and uh, his legs are in shape from our GPS unit, so I think he's ready to go. All right, and uh, final question: uh, a lot of good QBs in the MAC this year. Yeah. Um, what have you seen from your secondary during fall camp? Um, that has impressed you and kind of, um, you know, maybe lets you know that um, they're going to be up to the challenge. Well, I can tell you, um, I mean, we're we're fast. We're faster than we've ever been back there. I'm not ever been. I mean, we used to have Sam and Darius, so they, they were really fast too. But uh, I don't think any, I mean, I don't think people will be able to run by us, you know, which, which in the past I couldn't say that. Uh, I think we have probably four guys at corner that can, that can run, really run and play, and, and so – TC obviously was one of those ACLs last year, so he's back. And he even from day one to today, he's confident again, just like Zaire. It's the same story. Uh, obviously, Deshaun Bustle's probably our fastest guy on our team, so it's hard. Even when we put him against Jalen Hall, I mean, they're stride for stride down the field, which is key for a corner. Speed speed covers up a lot of other things when you have that kind of speed back there. And then uh, even the young guy, Aaron Wofford's come in. I mean, he's probably our fifth guy, fifth or sixth guy right now, but he's going to be a phenomenal player. I don't know if he'll play more than four games this year, but he's he's a special young talent. Um, Can I Lovely came back. He opted out last year. He looks great. Um, you know, D. Jack Jackson is a transfer, came in, and he can fly. So the speed, I think, of that group back there helps. Obviously, having a, a D. Ware, Delano Ware, um, Come, come from Illinois, and obviously Bryson's back, which is huge. And now AJ might be able to move back there. So there's a lot of pieces with speed and length. And it's not, we've always had a couple of those pieces. We've never had them all together before. Uh, so I'm ex- I'm really excited about the back. I just, I've been spending a lot of time with the back end. You can ask Caleb about what they're doing, and they're, they're, um, they're challenging everything. And that's kind of been our goal is to be body on body and make them make throws and tight window throws and, and, um, and, and they've been doing it. They've been making it hard, and it's been good for Caleb too, you know. And uh, you know they they are they are athletic enough to be body on body a lot, and we we need to keep that going.